Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Femininja Project, and thank you so much for tuning in. As always, I have a fascinating and wonderful guest with me today. We're going to learn a lot about natural heart health today. His name is Dr. Jack Wolfson. He is a board-certified cardiologist, best-selling author, husband, father, and the nation's number one natural heart doctor. For over two decades, more than a million people have experienced the transformational power of his courses and events. He is named one of America's top functional medicine doctors and is a five-time winner of the Natural Choice Awards as a holistic MD. His book titled The Paleo Cardiologist, The Natural Way to Heart Health, was an Amazon number one bestseller. He and his team are passionate about preventing, treating, and reversing heart disease naturally while reducing and or eliminating pharmaceuticals and dangerous surgeries. Dr. Dr. Wolfson, thank you so much for being here and welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Cheryl. It's a pleasure to be on. Excited to talk and share my message of health and wellness. And listen, mm -hmm. cardiovascular disease, number one killer worldwide, as you know. Uh, and uh, clearly, whatever whatever war pharmaceutical companies are waging against disease, it is not uh, successful. And of course, that's that's by design because it's the you know, the war they're waging is on uh, the public and on government and insurance companies in order to bilk them out of as much money as they can. So uh, I'm very excited to share the message of true health and wellness to your to your tribe. Thank you again. Mm, thank you for being here. And I love the fact that you just tell it like it is right from the very beginning. I love that. So tell us, you were a cardiologist in, I'm guessing, a traditional medical practice. Yes. You know, I like to say that I was kind of born into the medical industry. My father was a cardiologist and therefore I'd say, you know, in utero, like in my mother's womb, I'm listening to conversations about cardiovascular uh, disease and growing up, that's all that I listened to. My father, you know, talking to his uh, friends and colleagues about uh, heart disease. And uh, I wanted to be exactly like, you know, my father. He was my hero. And uh, I went through all the conventional, you know, training and I went through four years of medical school, three years of internal medicine, three years of cardiology. And then I joined the biggest group in the state of Arizona uh, as a hospital based cardiologist. So at the pinnacle of all that, um, when, when my, really my career was taking off, unfortunately, my father's, uh, career and really his health, uh, was in, uh, uh, very rapid demise. Mm -hmm. And eventually, you know, we would take him to the Mayo Clinic and he would get diagnosed with uh, something called progressive supranuclear palsy, which is similar to Parkinson's. And the Mayo Clinic says, we've got no reason why your father's sick and dying. And we've got no treatment for your father. And simultaneously and serendipitously, I met the woman who would become my wife, uh, actually. And she, uh, on our first date, she tells me exactly why my father is sick and dying. So this 29-year-old chiropractor, she has all the reasons why my father is sick and dying. Mayo Clinic has none. I listened to what she had to say uh, for a multitude of reasons. And eventually, I would leave the big uh, practice in 2012 and start my own company, Natural Heart Doctor. Mm -hmm. So I'm really curious about a couple of things. Um, number one, when you did decide to leave that practice, how was that received by your colleagues? I would imagine that they would think that you're a little bit crazy to leave a, you know, a lucrative cardiology practice. Yeah, most certainly. I mean, it's, and it was very, very lucrative. And I say this not because I'm uh, um, you know, you know, bragging or anything like that. It's just to get the point across, you know, uh, as a, as a partner in a large cardiology group, I was making well over a million dollars, mm -hmm. uh, you know, per year and just the safety and security of being in that job. So the other cardiologists, given the income and given the safety and, and the security of that job, why would they want to give it up? Why would they want to learn anything different? Would they accept anything that was different. So you're right, Cheryl, my message was not very well received, although I was, as you pointed out uh, early on in this uh, interview, uh, I was very 
uh, you know, vocal in my beliefs. And I, of course, I still am. So, uh, you know, but again, you know, I, I quote this from from Upton Sinclair in the book, The Jungle, from my hometown of Chicago. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get a man to understand something when his job depends on him not understanding it. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just the way that they are. Again, they they have to be confident in what they're doing. Uh, and listen, to give up the money, to give up the security, they're just not going to do it. But, uh, and, and, you know, finally I'll wrap this up, you know, the senior partner in the group, actually, the guy who was the managing partner, he sat me down uh, one day back in 2011. Mm -hmm. And he said, listen, I believe in what you're saying, talking about nutrition and lifestyle and all these things that lead to heart disease. And I understand how critical you are of the pharmaceutical industry. And in fact, my, you know, the woman who's going to become my third wife, she's totally on board with all this. You know, she's totally natural. But here's the deal, Jack. It's uh, it's not good for business. You're upsetting people. You're upsetting other referring doctors. You're ref upsetting people in the hospitals. And yes, you know, some people agree with you. There's a lot of people who don't. And what you're doing is not good for business. So therefore, you got to stand down. And I said, I quit. I know it. That was wow. It. So... So the other thing I wanted to ask, especially when you were talking about your dad, uh, you know, being a cardiologist and talking with his colleagues and you hearing all of this, um, you know, heart disease and, you know, did you see then what would be the difference in the incidence of heart disease in your dad's time when he was practicing as when you got into medicine and started practicing as far as, you know, the cases and the severity of the disease? Was there any change? The severity of the disease, I think, is is definitely still the same. The, the things that he struggled with with his patients in the 1970s and 1980s are the same things that we struggle with here in the year 2024. We still struggle with people with high blood pressure, people with uh, abnormal lipids, people with inflammation and oxidative stress, people with heart attacks and strokes and blood clots and cardiomyopathy and atrial fibrillation. And we're not... We're not winning that battle. We're not winning that battle, uh, but you know, by by any stretch, the difference. I think it was interesting. You know, with my father's generation, my father would, if he was, and my father would die at uh, the age of sixty three, three years after his diagnosis from the Mayo Clinic. Oh, I'm um, sorry. And his loss, though, Cheryl, uh, and what happened to him created who I am today. So for him, I am very grateful. You know, for that, and I think of him every single day, and I and. Uh, and I do miss him dearly. And I think he would have been very open and receptive to this type of model because that generation of, of, of people who were trained in the 1960s, there wasn't a lot of pharmaceutical options. And those that were had significant side effects. So it wasn't like that generation practicing in the 60s and 70s were this massive pill pusher uh, you know, group of people. The cardiologist currently in practice, it's just all about pharmaceuticals. It's all about these uh, guideline directed, you know, protocols. And of course the guidelines are written by the pharmaceutical industry. And it's every person who walks through the door, you're trying for a quick diagnosis and then a quick uh, blood, you know, uh, pharmaceutical, you know, or, or procedural strategy uh, to, you know, to deal with it. Lipitor is the number one selling drug of all time. It's got over a hundred billion dollars in sales for that pharmaceutical, and it's a worthless drug. It's a worthless drug, uh, and and I'm not even talking about the side effect profile, of which is tremendous, but just the fact that statin drugs uh, are ineffective, blood pressure drugs are ineffective, and it why why doesn't the mainstream recognize this? Again. They are brainwashed. They are brainwashed by their medical education, by the pharmaceutical companies, by the governing bodies, American Heart Association, American College of Cardiology, that own the educational process, uh, that own the testing mechanisms of how we get certified. So it really is uh, everything conspiratorial you can dream up about pharmaceutical companies. Every bit of it is true. I've seen every bit of it, every story. And I'll just you know sum it up for everybody here. I'm telling you, if you are trusting the medical realm, if you're trusting the pharmaceuticals, they're going to fail you. It is not the longevity strategy 
Women live in the United States up until 79. Men are averaging 76, 77. If you want that to be you, stay in the medical paradigm. If you want the best of health and wellness, right, Cheryl, that's what you and I are talking about here. Our natural heart doctor, home of the 100 year heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that the 100 year heart. And I want you to talk about that a little bit more. Um, but it, it almost sounds like when you're describing that relationship, it almost sounds like an incestuous relationship and an abusive relationship between, you know, the pharmaceuticals, the medical, um, the school, you know, the, the, the physicians. I mean, it just sounds so pathological. It's, it's just, it, it's, it's perfect. It's perfect by, by the pharmaceutical companies. They are the most incredible marketing companies in the world. Um, you know, you take a look at the last, you know, a few years of COVID and the marketing done behind that and the financial windfall of what that created for pharma. And then the people who are pulling the strings in the government are all tied to the pharmaceutical industry. People, you got to wake up and say enough is enough mm -hmm. already. And you're right, Cheryl. I mean, they sell us the fear. They sell us the fear of every medical diagnosis that mm -hmm. you watch television. They come up with with diagnoses I've never heard of. You know, with these acronyms, these abbreviations, you know, mm -hmm. you know, do you have uh, BLS? Do you have, uh, you know, XYZ? I mean, all these different things they make up. And then, of course, they have this therapy. So what they do is they find a therapy. Uh, that allegedly, allegedly treats X, Y, Z. And then they come up with this new diag you know, diagnosis, you know, gastroesophageal reflux disease. And now you've got tens of millions of people taking stomach acid suppressors. And does anybody ever look at this and say, why does my body produce stomach acid? Why does mm -hmm. my God given or evolutionary created body, whatever you want to believe in. Why does it have stomach acid? Why do the other animals have stomach <laughs> acid? And is it a good thing for me to turn off the production of that? What happens to everything else when we do so? So, you know, you're right. It pathological, uh, it's, it's just, you know, I, I guess you can look at it two ways. One way is you can look at everything through the lens of uh, money, power, control, greed. That's one way. Another way you can look at it, and this is a little bit more out there, but I'll throw it out there just out of the interest of saying it, because I do believe that we live in a world right now where we have to question everything. Mm -hmm. We should be allowed to question everything and everything should be on the table because frankly, anything is possible. So I say is this, Aside from the power, greed, control, why, why do things happen? They might, you know, there, there is a possibility. And again, this is out there, admittedly, that the, the, the demonic elements, the devil that we're up against, wants to truly change the fundamental nature of humans. Wants to totally, radically change us, change our DNA, so we are not created in God's image or in an evolutionary standpoint. They are altering the human frame and disconnecting us with, uh, with everything that we came from. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, that's a, you know, it's a little bit out there, but I just, I like the idea of just exploring all possibilities because in the world we live in, I'm telling you, uh, I certainly believe anything is possible. And, and I do believe that there are some very, very, very bad players mm -hmm. that have been around since the history of human existence mm -hmm. that, uh, that we need to be aware of, and they do not have our best interests at heart. Well, in the world that we're living in right now, it just seems that there is something nefarious going on. It seems like there is something that it makes no sense. It's almost like the world's gone crazy a little bit, but it has been building for a long time. Um, you know, I just, yeah, trust no one. I mean, I, I've always had issues with trust anyway, my entire life, but now I, I'm very suspicious of everything. I don't understand why all of a sudden, and I love how you said how they find the, the cure and then they make up the disease for the medication that they just created, because I used to say that several years ago, and it was actually several years ago, because they were coming up with, you know, what is this disease? I've never heard of it before, but hey, here's this medication. And when you turn on the television, all you see 
are these people who are dancing around because they're taking this pill or they've got this injection and they want to do this to lose weight. And it's really kind of sick. And the well, one of my favorite things, and that's I'm saying that with air quotes and sarcasm, is the uh, side effects of some of these wonderful, magnificent drugs that we should take because they're going to make us healthy. And then the side effects. But don't worry about the side effects because there's another medication for the side effects. So pretty soon, we're not humans listening to our bodies and paying attention. We're numbing our self-awareness and we're turning into a chemistry set or a chemistry experiment. Yeah, it's uh, you know, in, in the commercials that you're referring to, uh, they are, and just for, for society to open up their eyes and see how they're selling us on the sickness, you know, paradigm. But aside from the side effect profile, which uh, does deserve, uh, you know, conversation on that, and we'll talk about that maybe in a second, but, you know, it's like, do the drugs even work? So if you take a blood pressure drug and it lowers your numbers down, does that do anything for you? Does having lower numbers, does it, does that matter? No. You want to know if I take a pharmaceutical for my blood pressure, will that lower my risk of having a heart attack, stroke, and dying? And that's very questionable. And many studies show no. If I take a cholesterol drug, it may lower my numbers down, but will it lower my risk of having a heart attack, stroke, and dying? In fact, some studies say no. And ultimately at the end, and that could go on for, for blood sugar, that can go for weight loss drugs, all these different things. Uh, but ultimately, at the end of the day, it's not about best case scenario, lowering your chances of a heart attack from 5% to 4% on a yearly basis. It's about how do we get to 0% chance of having a heart attack, right? Mm -hmm. Cheryl, you're an active woman, you know, I, you don't want to have a heart attack. I don't want to, well, well now I'm, I'm at 4%. I was at 5%, you know, thank you, Pfizer. Like, <laughs> I, you know, no, I, I don't want that. I want to be in the 0% chance of dying group and 100% chance of living until you know, I'm a hundred group. Uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, just, and, and, and like to the side effects, if you think about, you know, the side effects of, of, uh, let's just say statin drugs, right? So you take a statin drug to lower your cholesterol down, yada, yada. Uh, and that leads to a couple of things. One, your blood sugar goes up, statin drugs, increase blood sugar. So now you're on a, a pharmaceutical for blood sugar, uh, statin drugs, also lead to muscle aches and muscle pains. So now you're taking a little bit more aspirin or uh, Celebrex or Vioxx, of course, which had all of their different faults to it and stuff like that. So now you develop stomach upsets. So now you're taking a proton pump inhibitor like Prilosec. And because of that, now you're deficient in certain vitamins and minerals and that leads to neuropathy so now you're on you know something uh for you know for your neuropathy you know neuro uh, you know gabapentin or something like that which then has more side effects so you're right these people wind up on seven eight pharmaceuticals and they're all over they're all around us and then of course because all the pain and things like that then all these people wind up getting addicted to narcotics and then they jump behind the wheel of a car and they're driving around society where, you know, where your family is and my family is. And, um, and that's our situation. Mm -hmm. Now, what could possibly go wrong in that situation? Uh, well, just about everything. Just what about I don't everything. understand is why people don't get incredibly frustrated when they get on that. One of my guests called it the doctor dance, um, you know, with, with all the medications and everything. If they don't realize that they're not feeling better. And in some cases, maybe even feeling worse. Why do they still continue to do the same thing and take the same medications or do the same type of, of protocol? You know, that, that that's just for me, I, I would be asking, why am I doing this? Um, why, why is that not more commonplace? Although I think it is becoming more commonplace you know, than, um, you know, than, than, than it was before. I think our generation, you know, younger generations, they're looking at this and saying, hey, I don't want to swallow all these pharmaceuticals. I don't want to live, you know, how my, 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 my mother did, my father did, aunts, uncles, you know, whatever it may be. Why don't people change, though? Uh, I think, you know, once again, it's just kind of, you know, you just kind of you just kind of keep going down that same road, you know, the same road, you know, uh, you know traveled. Uh, I think people are fearful 
of changing out of that, you know, because again, they've been with a particular doctor, they trust the doctor. Uh, and I think ultimately, a lot of times they don't know where they don't know there's an alternative, they don't know where else to go. And then finally, I'll say, I think the pharmaceuticals are so brain damaging. Um, in addition, what I would say, because our methodology at Natural Heart Doctor is eat well, live well, think well. So when you violate eat well, live well, and think well, you're not capable of making these more, um, uh, you know, executive based decisions to, you know, to opt out, uh, you know, and, and even to find wrong, like their brain is just so altered uh, by living in the society that they're not even able to, you know, see, you know, a way out of it. This is a little melodramatic, but that's what I do. Uh, it almost sounds like Stockholm syndrome. I, I think, uh, I think in so many cases, I mean, it really has to be, you know, where it's like people, you know, how, how can you be someone who winds up with you at the same doctor and then you have, you know, stent, stent, bypass surgery and other stents and other stents. How do you not wake up one day and say, you know, you know, th this isn't right for me. Um, but, uh, you know, again, their marketing message, their message is, I mean, this is a, 1.5 pharma is a 1.5 trillion dollar annual industry numbers that we can't even fathom mm -hmm. i mean i i, I mean I, 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 how do you wrap your heads around i mean yeah I, I can recognize the number i know it's a one and a five and a heck of a lot of zeros but the 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 power behind that machine uh it's impressive it's very very impressive but we are going to mm -hmm. fix it. It's, fix it. it's impressive and it is incredibly infuriating because it's almost, it, it insults my intelligence as a human being. And I think a lot of people could feel that way too, you know, it, because it's taking away our own authority, our own personal power, that uh, we're smart enough that we can start looking into natural art alternatives ourselves, but we end up being so bombarded with this information that even if we don't believe it or we're not paying close attention, our nervous system, our brain is recording that information. It's not judging whether it's right or wrong, accurate or not, but it's just, just recording it and it's actually changing the pathways of our brain and the way we think and what we believe. Yeah, I mean, most certainly it's it's doing damage on so many different levels, uh, you know, of what that is, uh, you know, and if you, and, and I think also, I mean, listen, maybe to put it in a little bit more uh, of a context that so many people can see, I mean, just look at society today, look at, uh, look at inflation, the way that it is, look at government debt, uh, the way that it is, look at Medicare and Medicaid, of which there is no money available, you know, for that, it's all money that is being printed to fuel this industry that has no benefit. So you can only say that these that these um, I'm going to blame the, uh, the men on this one, and I'm going to I'm going to say that all disease is man made because I'm going to blame the men for that, and I'm going to say that the men uh, in the golf cart on a Sunday, right? So who's in there? Who's who 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 are the four guys in the golf cart, and one of which is a government official, and then the other one is a pharmaceutical CEO, and then the other one is the uh, is the insurance company right and then the other one you know is is the doctor and it's just like i mean they're all in this as you said this incestuous relationship uh and there's no one to put on the brakes because i would look at this you know cheryl and i would say we know for example that the majority of stress tests being done let me say, I know that the majority of stress tests being done, and this is in the medical literature, are unnecessary. There is waste all over the place. And if Jack Wolfson knows it, well, see, you know, insurance companies know it, and pharmaceutical companies know it, and hospitals know it. If everybody knows it, why does it continue on? And it's just because the people that are in control in the golf cart, they're just having a great time. They're golfing at the nicest courses. They're traveling around. They got the best clubs. You know, they hit a ball out of bounds. They take a mulligan. I mean, it's just, you know, um, I'm glad we can laugh about it. And, uh, and, and it's like we shouldn't laugh because there are so many people 
who have just been abused mm -hmm. uh, and killed in mm -hmm. this in this methodology. Uh, you can only laugh out of just sheer disbelief uh, mm -hmm. that this is happening and maybe also just laugh at them because it, it has to come to an end. And yeah, we, well, you, you know, have you to laugh to because, you know, otherwise you just cry or get, you know, incredibly depressed. But I, I think to a certain degree that the, the tide is changing somewhat. I've talked to several MDs who have left lucrative practices to go into alternative medicine. One was um, an orthopedic surgeon who became so discouraged at, you know, having to repair the fractures that he finally had this, you know, mental head smacking moment. Why aren't we helping and coaching our patients to prevent fractures rather than put them together after it happens? So I think that there is um, a little bit like this huge ship is turning a little bit, that there are more people who are seeing this alternative health and natural healing, um, the, the benefits of that. Well, you know, uh, I mean, listen, you spent 20 years as a respiratory therapist. Uh, and if you look at all those people, let's just say with various forms of lung disease, every one of them could be helped out by natural holistic strategies, every single one. Yet, how many people get that information? Oh, you, sir, should really stop smoking. Oh, really? I haven't heard that since the 1960s. Thank you so much, Cheryl, you know, for telling me to quit smoking. Great advice. Oh, by the way, make sure you check your house for radon. Okay, my house doesn't have radon. Now what? Now what do I do? What can we do to help those people? Just like you said, your friend, the orthopedic surgeon, you know, who you interviewed, um, you know, it's just, you know, from a respiratory standpoint, there's so many different things, how the foods we eat can help our lungs and how the foods we eat can hurt our lungs, how we sleep, how much sunshine we get. What is our air quality like? Are we exposed to mold mycotoxins, other environmental toxins and pollutants, off gassing of VOCs and other chemicals? Are there certain physical activities and movements that we can do? Are there breathing techniques that we can do that can heal and support and even cure these people? The answer is yes, yes, and yes. But what do we do? I mean, as a, as a you know, pulmonologist, uh, it's just all pharmaceuticals. Here's some steroids. Here's some beta agonist. You know, here's, here's this new pharmaceutical that's invented. And that's, that's, all that's all that's being done for these people. And it's, uh, it's pretty sad. Mm. Yeah, years ago, I was diagnosed with diagnosed with asthma. And I kept saying, you, no, you don't understand, I don't have asthma. And the um, allergist said, he laughed. And he said, Oh, yeah, no self respecting respiratory therapist has asthma. And I said, Look at all my PFTs. I mean, they're all 100% or better. And no, you have got to take these inhalers, because if you don't, you're going to damage your interstitium. And it's like, well, I know what my interstitium and I don't want to damage it. So I did it for, for a while, but I kept saying, I know I don't have asthma. So I just went cold turkey, stopped taking them and ended up doing the, like this little breathing practice. And all of a sudden I was fine. But yeah. it was like, yeah, you know, yeah. you have to take it or else you're going to hurt yourself. You're going to damage something. Your tissues will never, never, you know, be normal again. Well, that brings up a great point right there that, you know, again, you know, doctors are, are notorious bullies. Like they are some of the original bullies uh, in, in, in the story here. And uh, the doctor, you know, comes in and it's just my way or the highway. And I think that our practice at Natural Heart Doctor, we really talk about this being a partnership. This is not a dictatorship. This is not me barfing out all these commands towards you. This is about us discussing the best way moving forward. I have to give you education. I have to really take a good history. I have to have good follow-up. I have to, you know, do all these different steps, you know, along the way. But, um, you know, again, the doctors, you know, if you're thinking, okay, well, I'm going to ask my doctor, hey, is there an alternative approach to whatever my condition is? Uh, you know, they're going to say, no, they're the same ones that, you know, put you on those pharmaceuticals, put you on that plan, and they're going to defend their, their you know, methodology uh, hook, line, and sinker. And it's, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely unfortunate. And I tell people, listen, you know, go out and get a second opinion, get a third opinion. Mm -hmm. This is the age of the internet. You know, or someone's like, oh, Cheryl, are you like Dr. Google? And you're like, yeah, I'm Dr. Google. Uh, and what I did was is that I Googled something and it took me to the medical literature on PubMed.gov. And I, I saw these original studies and it turns out that, yeah, you know, breath work is effective. 
for people mm -hmm. who are labeled with, uh, you know, asthma. And it turns out that, you know, by, by eating more seafood, I lower the risk of atrial fibrillation, stroke, heart attack, uh, and dementia. So, uh, or people like, oh, you know what, you know, you're just another mommy blogger. Yeah, I'm a mommy blogger who happens to go research on Google to come up with the data. Why the medical doctors aren't doing this, I don't know. But uh, I'd sooner put my uh, health in the hands of a mommy blogger or a Dr. Google than I would uh, any other doctor as it relates to chronic disease. Mm -hmm. Well, especially if it's a mommy blogger, boy, you don't want to make a mom mad. Get a, They want the yeah. truth. They, yeah. Uh, I mean, or let me say this. I mean, a, a lot of moms want the truth, uh, and I certainly encourage those moms to do so. Uh, and the truth is out there on the internet. Uh, I'm not saying it's necessarily easy to find, mm -hmm. and it can be a lot of mixed signals and information. But uh, you know, I mean, th that's that's the beauty of this age of information. We can really mm -hmm. go in there and just learn. You know, the the cancer doctor says, "I want you to go on this chemo drug," and you're like. Uh, what's the benefit of the chemo drug? Like, is does it lower my risk of dying from this particular cancer from 70% chance of being dead to 30% chance? Or is it 70% chance of dying in the next five years versus 67% chance? Uh, and if that's the case, then I don't want to take it, you know? So uh, getting that information, uh, I think, is in, in, you know, in absolutely imperative. You know, the medical doctors are really, really good at labels, right? Somebody comes in, Cheryl, right? You know, oh, Cheryl, you fit the symptoms of asthma. Uh, and somebody else fits the symptoms of, I don't know, let's just say, uh, you know, you know, heart disease or somebody else has, you know, symptoms of, of dementia. They're just, uh, you know, or, or exotic diagnoses, you know, uh, Church Strauss, Wegener's, uh, you know, granulomatosis, sarcoidosis, all these different things that people would have. And you saw that in the pulmonary space, those diagnoses. Mm -hmm. um, the set of signs and symptoms that are labeled as a disease. And then of course, these are the medical therapies for the disease. And, but nobody ever asks why, why, if, if I have the signs and symptoms that you call asthma, why? It's not because I'm deficient in some kind of biologic therapy or some kind of inhaler or some kind of a steroid. Something is causing this. And don't tell me it's my genetics. Don't tell me it's bad luck. Don't tell me it's because I'm getting older. Yes, thank you. There, there are reasons behind it. You know, Cheryl, mm -hmm. let me say one more thing too. I, I, I want to get this out for everybody. Your genetics, ladies and gentlemen, are perfect. Your genetics are perfect. Again, God-given, evolutionary, God-created evolution. I don't know. But your genetic, however you got here, you got here and your genetics are perfect. It is the man-made poisons and violations of eat well, live well, think well, that put you into the situation you're in. And therefore, if you reverse all those, your body can heal. Mm, I love that. And we talk about that a lot on this show, that our body has an incredible capacity to heal itself as long as you give it the right tools and the right environment. It is amazing what we can heal from and recover from. And, you know, since you were already talking about information and looking for information, blah, 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 and you can always Google it. I just want to uh, make a point right now, especially for the listeners, to go to Dr. Wolfson's uh, website. That website is a wealth of information. I spent quite a bit of time looking through some of the articles and stuff, the learning center or the learning resources. And I mean, I was finding things I never heard of or I never knew before. For example, you already were talking about the toxins and the toxins in the body. I never knew that they were related to like retaining fat cells and making it more difficult to lose weight. So if you want to just address that, because I, th I found that really fascinating and I, I think the audience would really like to hear about it too. Yeah. Thank you. And, and the learning center on the website, what I'm really trying to do there is that um, is just to cr try and create a database of information where people could search for their particular issue that they're having and they will find the condition on our website. If you go into Google and you Google it, it's going to be very difficult to come up with information by Dr. Jack Wolfson or, or anybody else that's not uh, uh, Pfizer or uh, Mayo Clinic or Cleveland Clinic, again, with that mm -hmm. controlled message. Uh, to answer your question, 
over the years, it has amazed me that a lot of people are overweight and yet they swear they don't eat any differently than the people who are thin. Now, in some cases, they may not be telling the truth, like they do eat more ice cream cookies and cupcakes than the next person. But in a lot of cases, I think what's, what's happening, and there's some support from this in the literature, is that because of all of the environmental toxins, of which there are hundreds of thousands uh, that are man-made chemicals that are uh, affecting us, these toxins, and other environmental you know, chemicals and you know, toxins you know, from mold, you know, for example, or, or water damage bacteria and such. So anyway, so these toxins get into the body and the body wants to store them somewhere safely and effectively. Now, of course, some of those toxins will be breathed in, will be swallowed, and they will be excreted through normal pathways, urine, stool, skin, through your breath. But those that are not excreted, the body wants to store them. And it does. the, the, the body is smart. It doesn't want to store toxins in your liver or in your brain or in your heart, things that are extremely useful. It stores these toxins in fat cells. So what happens is, is that as we become more and more toxic with this infinite number of chemicals, mm -hmm. uh, the body then decides, okay, well, we've got to store it in certain places and therefore it creates more fat cells, makes the fat cells larger. And I think mm -hmm. that's, uh, I think that's part of the issue. So as, as men and women start to detox and start to get out of these various poisons, uh, then the weight starts to come off as well. And so I think that really helps to give a lot of people information uh, you know, well, you know, hopefully and say, I mean, listen, I, I'm not, I'm not, you know, lowering diet. I mean, diet obviously is very important in the equation. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, uh, I think it really puts an interesting spin on a lot of these people that struggle to lose weight, uh, you know, just interfering with these hormones because of that metabolic influences, you know, because of, uh, because of the environmental toxins and, and ultimately at yeah, my experience, as you start to detoxify these people, a, get them out of the toxic environment and then B, support the body, uh, phase one, phase two, liver detoxifiers, uh, uh, you know, uh, different uh, binders that help to mm -hmm. bind up toxins so you can eliminate more effectively through stool and through urine uh, that uh, people lose weight. People okay. lose weight independently of dietary changes. Wow, nice. So um, there was something else. Oh, what were we talking about? It wasn't the toxins. Oh, I can't remember exactly what was on the tip of my tongue. Hmm. Maybe I need to take some of those things for my brain. I don't know. Um, well, eat, huh? eat more. You know, if you're looking for brain food, it is uh, seafood is the number one food on the planet. There's nothing better, more important than eating seafood. People with the highest le levels of omega-3 from eating seafood have the lowest risk of everything. The other thing food-wise that I think is, is just penultimate strategy mm -hmm. uh, from a food standpoint is to eat the organs. Uh, our ancestors knew this. Animals in the wild know this. For some reason, humans no longer know this. So eating uh, uh, bison, uh, for example, bison or buffalo, you know, liver, heart, kidney, uh, uh, societies in years past ate brains. I mean, like 98% you know, of Americans or more, right, have never had brain tissue, Not, nine, 99%. I mean, I, I don't know anybody, you know, again, so uh, I mean, just looking at our ancestral way of living, how we got into this way, and, and let's bring it into the 21st century. I'm not saying everybody run around mm -hmm. naked outside, although it's probably the healthiest strategy, you know, to do so. You know, embrace those things of eat well, live well, think well. Mm -hmm. Those are going to be the ultimate uh, strategies. And uh, if I uh, just just to get it out there again, I do think that mold. Uh, I, I think that water living in a home with water damage uh, potentially is the number one killer uh, in the world. Really, and I want people to understand that because wow. when a home has water damage to all these artificial materials that we build with, uh, mold and bacteria grow. The mold and bacteria released our Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, these mycotoxins that are aerosolized. This is not conjecture. This is reality. That's mm -hmm. how the mold and the fungus uh, survive. That's how they protect themselves. Uh, they release these things into the environment. We swallow them down. We eat them down. They come in through our skin. Uh, and then uh, we get sick and we die. Uh, and again, this is in the medical literature. Uh, you may be familiar with the most common mold mycotoxin, the most well-known mold mycotoxin, that's called penicillin. So penicillin comes from the penicillium mold that releases this toxin that kills bacteria. 
It's not personal. It's not, well, I guess it is personal on, on behalf of the mold. Uh, the mold wants to survive. There's another pharmaceutical uh, called uh, Cellcept. Cellcept is given to people who get a an organ transplant. So if you're around someone, Cheryl, right, and you're training, you know, and in your work, and they got a lung transplant, or they got a liver transplant, or a kidney transplant, or a heart transplant, one of the pharmaceuticals they take is called Cellcept, C-E-L-L-C-E-P-T. It suppresses the immune system, so you do not reject the new organ. So your body's immune system doesn't say, that's not my heart, that's not my lung, that's not my kidney. And that cell sept that suppresses the immune system so much that it allows the new organ to last is called, the generic name for it is mycophenolic acid. It is a mold mycotoxin that's so powerful that it shuts down your immune system in that scenario and there's a lot of people living in a home or in a building where mold is growing and releasing mycophenolic acid into the environment. And we test people's bodies through their urine and it's in there. So um, I just want people to be aware again, whatever, whatever your sickness is, whatever your health ailment is, even if you're not, even if you just wanna be proactive, do two things, get urine mold mycotoxin testing, and then also test your home uh, the, the product that we recommend, we sell on our website, it's the number uh, eight Swiffer test from a company called Envirobiomics, but mm -hmm. it is on our website and includes an interpretation by myself or one of our uh, other physicians or health coaches to review that. But uh, uh, mold, Cheryl, really, if you because I obviously you're a very intelligent woman with a lot of different hats that you've worn over the years, you dive into the mold story and, and, I, and I got great videos on that too. And you will be blown away because it's just uh, water damage, living in a water damaged structure explains everything, everything, which is wonderful because we now have something that really explains so much, mm -hmm. but extracting yourself from that, once you get the diagnosis, it becomes a lot more difficult than you just say, Hey, swallow this Lipitor or take this particular supplement or exercise more, sleep better. Um, but uh, I hope, I hope your audience finds that useful because I certainly have in my life. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that actually, I remembered as you were talking, what I wanted to ask you about, and that was the reversibility of symptoms or reversibility of tissue damage or, you know, not only to the heart, but, you know, liver, um, brain, Anything that we're going through that we've been di diagnosed with, again, I'm using those air quotes, we've been diagnosed with can be reversed through your eat well, live well, think well. Uh, well, let me first you know, let me first apologize for my previous answer that was so long, and I'm grateful that you did not forget your question a second time because I was so <laughs> long-winded you know, with the last one. Uh, let me say this. Uh, here's one thing for sure. It will never be reversed in the medical community. Medical community will never reverse anything. They will band-aid it. They'll cover it up and stuff like that. By eating well, living well, think well, as you said, you're giving your body what it needs, taking away what it doesn't to give your body the best chance of recovery. Mm. If you lose, you know, if you lose a limb, my strategies, nature strategies are not going to regrow it, right? If you've suffered a massive heart attack and the heart tissue supplied by the vessel that was blocked and the heart attack is there, the tissue is dead. It's not going to recover. I know of no strategies to recover the dead tissue. Who knows what the future will bring? I don't know. It doesn't exist in the medical world and I'm not familiar with anything in the natural world. But whatever your ailment is, I believe that you could live longer I believe you could live better with these particular strategies that we talked about. With a better quality of life. Totally, totally. And also just uh, that that excitement of um, the possibilities, mm. you know, getting, you know, learning the truth, getting out of that medical matrix, mm -hmm. you know, where, you know, again, that movie was just so powerful, you know, from 25, you know, years ago about just living in the matrix 
And, you know, that's how I found myself in 2004 when I get introduced to this 29 year old chiropractor and she starts spitting this information out to me. And I guess for those people who know the movie um, and I'm a big fan of it, like she was my Morpheus and I was the, I guess I was her Neo to help her bring the truth, you know, to the world. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, it, hopefully this message is very mm -hmm. empowering to people to say, yes, mm -hmm. there is something you can do Mm -hmm. that can make tremendous differences, not only in your own life, but all the people that you surround yourself with, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, maybe a lot of your people, you know, your listeners, they're, they're women, you know, in their 50s and 60s and 70s. These are the matriarchs of the family. Like how inspirational, I mean, this is, this gets me emotional, but I mean, how, how amazing that is to be the inspiration, uh, you know, to your family and like, look at mom, look at grandma, like grandma, doesn't eat the crap anymore. Grandma lost, you know, 15 pounds. Grandma's moving. Grandma's, at, you know, doing things. Grandma's brain is there. Grandma lived until she was 96 or 102, whatever. And she was just like awesome. And then didn't wake up one day. What a perfect way to go. Mm -hmm. uh, the inspiration of that. I mean, my father died. As I said, he was 63. I'm 53. I've got four children, 16, 11, six, and three. I don't want to die. Mm -hmm. I don't want to die. And yet I see people dying all the time or they are slowly, you know, dying and they're sick and they don't do the things, you know, they want to do or they can do and should be doing. So, you know, the best time to get healthy, obviously, was many years ago. The second best time is is today. So mm -hmm. good luck to everybody. And just to start, just start. Everybody's one meal away. You know, I mean, we're, mm -hmm. we're, we're one meal away from getting back on track. Mm -hmm. Like the last meal may have included, you know, cookies, cupcakes, ice cream, you know, fast food or whatever. But what if the next meal is uh, free range, grass fed, grass finished, uh, a bison burger with a gluten-free bun and some vegetables, uh, and a side salad, mm -hmm. like, I mean, like, or, or, you know, you know, for breakfast, instead of having pancakes, you had, a, you know, a three egg, uh, asparagus omelet. And I'm talking mm -hmm. about all the yolk and stuff like that. Cause that's mm -hmm. all the story. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's just like, we're, we're just, we're one meal away from getting back on track, mm -hmm. uh, from we're, we're one day of movement of exercise of getting back on track. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what, starting today, I'm going to walk, you know, two miles, mm -hmm. uh, starting today, I'm going to go to sleep a half hour earlier. Uh, normally I go to sleep at 11 tonight. I'm going to make it 10 30 mm -hmm. and I'm going to get on that track. So, uh, we can do it. I'm not saying it's easy and society is against us, but we could do it. Mm -hmm. And like I said, just get started and don't try and change everything at the same time, because that's overwhelming and that, that gets discouraging. But like you said, even just one small thing, that 30 minutes going to bed a little bit earlier, or instead of having those, the cookies and the ice cream and the cake uh, for dessert, why don't you have like a nice herbal tea or something like that? Just something small makes a really big difference. And it adds up. It's like, I always say, it's like putting change, you know, our pocket change in a bucket before you know it, you know, that bucket is full, you got $300 or taking the money out and pretty soon you're empty. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. I mean, listen, uh, eat, you know, eat more seafood people try and eat organs or the organ capsules. Uh, another commitment I think is great. Cheryl too, uh, is, you know, as we record this, we're just into the new year. What if you were to make a commitment to say, I'm no longer going to eat processed sugar. I'll mm -hmm. eat fruit. I'll use raw honey. I'll use organic maple syrup, but I'm not going to have anything where S U G A R is in the label, you know? So mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I mean, cause that, that I think is realistic for a lot of people because mm -hmm. giving up sugar is not easy. Um, an, another thing I love to vilify, although I love to consume, although I don't anymore. And I did was alcohol. Uh, I don't think alcohol is the friend of anyone. Anyone who says alcohol is healthy in any way, shape or form, uh, is mistaken. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll let that simmer a little bit. Well, I, I bake, I don't bake a lot, but I like to bake, you know, like banana breads, uh, muffins, that type of thing. And I don't put any sugar in it. And you know what? Yeah. It tastes just fine. 
My husband doesn't think so, but I'm slowly, slowly, again, baby steps. Trying yeah. to get well, it. You know, let me look. Yeah, I mean, it sound, sounds delicious. I mean, and I tell people, right, so I say eat more seafood, eat more nose to tail, uh, grass fed, grass finished animals, always gluten free. Uh, try and keep that sugar, you know, again, uh, if you, you know, again, as we said, try and keep it to, you know, raw honey, you know, you know, the fruit, the organic maple syrup. And then uh, to that end also is that, you know, make it all organic, get the chemicals out of the food, mm -hmm. no matter what you're eating, get the chemicals out. Uh, mm -hmm. If you like, uh, yeah, if you like uh, cookies, cupcakes, ice cream, just make it organic. And that way mm -hmm. you're getting the chemicals out. I'm not approving those things, but if you're going to do it, just do it in a way that does it without the chemicals. Okay. So where can people get a hold of you? How can they get in touch with you? How can they follow you? By the way, uh, you've got some a great YouTube channel too, as well as your website. So just give us some of those links so the audience knows where to find you. Oh, and where to find your book. You got it. Thank you. So uh, the website is naturalheartdoctor.com. Uh, like you said, there's a great learning center in there. And we've got, you know, tons of videos and articles and information. Mm -hmm. We've got excellent online courses, more and more stuff coming, webinars coming. Uh, and then for the book, if you want to get a copy of the book, it's free. All you do is pay shipping, freeheartbook.com. Wow. You get a copy of the Paleo Cardiologist. And yeah, we talk, in, you know, nutrition in there, but it's also about the uh, ancestral lifestyle. Uh, that's mm -hmm. so important. And we got chapters on top, you know, tests that you need and top supplements. So it's uh, great information. And yeah, we're on social media. We're there. Um, and, um, you know, I, I mean, I think social media has its place, uh, you know, going forward. And we want to mm -hmm. be careful about how much we use, you know, of it and how we spend our time on there. Mm -hmm. uh, but we try and put out really uh, beneficial uh, information. Okay, I have one more question for you. Uh, well, actually two, I lied. Okay, so the first question is when that 29-year-old chiropractor on your first date started to tell you, you know, what was wrong, did you have like a little bit of a, a gut-wrenching reaction? Like, are you kidding me? Are you going to be telling me? Or were you like, okay, just tell me more? Yeah, you know, I like to say this, you know, I listened for three reasons. Number one, she's smoking hot. Number two, I saw the sickness in my father. Mayo Clinic has no idea. And here's the 29 year old chiropractor who's got all the reasons why my father's sick. Uh, number three, I saw all the sickness in the hospital. So what she had to say made perfect sense. The hospitals are revolving door, right? People come in, here's a stent, here's bypass surgery. Uh, here's pharmaceuticals, and then they come back in a few year, a few months later, you know, with either side effects of meds or recurrent health problems and stuff like that. And then, of course, you know, I guess number four in that of why I listened was because, yeah, I was selfish. Like, I didn't want that to become me. I'm like, well, um, this is interesting. I don't want that to be me, uh, you know, and and uh, I'll listen to, you know, some strategies of how I can change it. And and really in retrospect, it just seems so basic and so easy to understand. Like, oh, he's, you know, this is the brilliant information. Eat well, live well, think well. And it really is that easy. But the medical doctors, they just, they don't get that training, you know, from day mm -hmm. one, pharmaceuticals, procedures. We never talk about nutrition, lifestyle, healthy thought processes, um, it's unfortunate. You know, you're talking about some of the smartest men and women in the world that are in the medical fields and they're just, they're just brainwashed. They just know what they know. You know, Cheryl, it's like if you and I, you know, went on a trip to uh, Mongolia, you know, and we're like walking around and they're like, oh, look at these two idiots. They don't speak Mongolian. And we're like, we're not idiots. We just, I never learned whatever language <laughs> you're all speaking here in Mongolia. So, um, uh, you know, that's what it amounts to. And uh, yeah, the more and more we can wake up these medical doctors to the reality. And I think we're doing that. So uh, I think the future is, is positive. Okay. And then the other thing, the last thing I wanted to ask you is to put yourself back in time, brand new, um, you know, just graduated, just finished medical school, you you know, beginning of your career. Would you have ever imagined at that point in your life, what you would be doing now? No, no, thousand percent. No way. No, no way, no way, shape or form. Would I ever imagine that? And I think, you know, um, you know, I, I, I did hear, I did hear uh, somebody say this uh, pretty recently. When you're trying to, uh, w whether you're trying to get a message out there or influence people or tell your story or how you are personally, as you are right at this moment, fall in love with your past. Fall in love with everything that's ever happened to you. 
because here you are. And this is who you are. It's made everything that you are right now. So if you appreciate everything and every experience and every opportunity and every failure that you've had and say, here I am now and going forward, what I can do and what I can become because of everything in my past, um, mm -hmm. then it's a great thing. Because I could look back on it and say, oh, I wish I knew this when I was younger and I wish I did this and I could have saved my father. Yeah, on and on and on. So all that stuff, as you know, it doesn't do any good dwelling on the past. But if I thank everything in my past for where I am right now and where I'm going, I think that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Great conversation. Before we sign off, do you have like one final little pearl of wisdom for the uh, listeners? I know you've given us a lot to think about, a lot to chew on, so to speak. Um, just a final little thing to leave with them. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's so many different things that I could say. Uh, let me just kind of reiterate, um, you know, back back to the mold story. I just want to say it one more time and the water damage in your home. Please check. Uh, please check that out. Don't don't say, oh, my home is brand new or we just checked it and stuff like that. Um, uh, you know, it's uh, you know, just please check it out. Tests don't guess. There's tests to be able to check it out. Please do so. It's very important. I love that test don't guess boy that's pretty powerful well thanks again for being here i really appreciate it and everybody thank you so much for listening oh, do share this episode with everybody you know uh especially if they're really interested in improving their health and their wellness and their level of function and who wouldn't be interested in that and it's just really so much great information to think about do go to Dr. Wolfson's website and check out his, his uh, articles. So much incredible information there as well. And remember just your health. If you don't have your health, you don't have anything. And that is the way of the Femininja.